Okay, so somebody said I should do this in real time. Uh, and I can't do it on a... I can't do live stream because uh, I don't have Wi-Fi in here yet. So this is a, a rear disc brake uh, swap for the old uh, Civic. This is a coupe. Uh, so 14 mil on the bottom from the control arm to the trailing arm. There's another 14 mil here. This one's got a, a nut on the other side. So just take the nut off. It helps to put your wrench here when you turn it The bolt goes fine. I might actually switch to electric impact in a bit just because the compressor is going to be noisy. Another 14 mil bolt up the top here. Again, use your use your wrench to help pull that that bolt out. Put that there. So that's loose. And then we got two 17 mils on the front holding the trailing arm bushing. But before I do that, I'm gonna do the toe for adjust bolt. Because I don't want I don't want that link staying on and getting twisted. So you can see the the mark where the toe adjustment bolt was previously. When you put it back, you're gonna get it close to that mark so you can get it aligned, but that bolt comes out. Uh, not tapered on that one. That's for the, the, uh, the rear toe adjust, sorry. The rear toe adjust. And then we're gonna pop that out. So that's out of the unibody, so that's not going to be hanging. Then we're just left with the two 17s. 17, 17. 19. Oh, and then the cable. The cable is, I swear, the easiest part of this whole setup. So that one's... Oh, it's going to loosen because we got the brake line we got to do. So I, I put some uh, rust penetrant. There's no rust on this car, but just a little bit of lube. So that's a 10 mil. Ten mil line. And the way it is here with the line, well, that cracked nice and easy. It doesn't really matter where the dirt goes in this case because the dirt's going to be going down into the line and in this case the line is attached to the wheel cylinders. So who cares? If you cared, you'd, uh, you'd take the airline and blow it out. Uh, there's that uh, air compressor again. get our, our bucket to collect any brake fluid. So you always want to undo the line before you take the, the clip off that retains the hose to the body. Otherwise, uh, it'd be hard to crack that line. Okay, that's off. And then this little clip, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little clip here. Just grab it with your pliers pull straight out nothing to it but that dirt there I'm gonna want to clean that up we'll clean up a little bit of dirt here um, brake parts cleaner only reason is there's brake fluid there's brake fluid here which will will eat the paint so if you care 
you're gonna to wanna to get that clean. So now that that's out, the clip's off, this pulls right out. And the easiest part of this whole thing is the e-brake cables. Uh, so there's two 10 mils that hold this on. This goes through, through the body to the interior. On the inside, you just have to take either the armrest, armrest off or you need to take the cover for the e-brake. Uh, so you need a flat screwdriver to take the cover off. There's two Phillips screws. You slide that armrest. If, actually, if there's an armrest, I believe there's two Phillips on the sides. So you, you pull that back, it pops up. There's two 12 mils that hold the bracket that retain this. And then you go and you slide them out. This is so much faster than even this. It takes a matter of probably get that done, the whole interior, in one minute. Okay, so now we're all loose here. We're only left with one more 17 mil on this arm, which I loosened. All right, that's it. So there's your uh, drum brake setup. So take that out, put it over here somewhere. Now this is a uh, disc brake setup. Happens to be out of a out of a Del Sol VTEC, but I believe the SI is. Uh, that size the same. So I gotta turn these rotors. I might do them on the on-car lathe. That's why they're going on like this. Now all these bolts here, we're gonna use some never sees. Copper coat, never sees, whatever it is. You do not want these seizing in the bushings. It's just wreck your day. If it does, if you're trying to get them out and they do seize in the bushings, uh, grab your sawzall and then grab some new, some new arms. That's the easiest way to do it. So we're gonna coat these suckers. Uh, that's basically it. So this here. Short one on top, shock, shock through bolt. This, this one, right, this is the short one. Yeah, it's gonna hang it up here. Lots of, uh, lots of anti-seize on there. You don't want to have any problems in the future. Now these bolts, you should just snug them up. And you gotta wait till it's on the ground until you finally torque them. Cause you don't want to load these bushings up any. Uh, the shock here, actually I'm gonna cheat. Cause uh, I'm lowering this car at the same time here. So I'm not gonna do this part up. But uh, you get the idea. So I won't put this completely together. Looks like the <laughs> setup has a bolt already in here. I won't use that one, that's a rusty one. I'm gonna line up the front. Our toe adjuster goes into the hole. Yeah, part of working here is always finding the right tool for the job. I'm just gonna give it a bit of a, a bit of an adjustment. There it goes.
and I can see the old mark on the body where it was before. I'm gonna line it up with that. This one, yeah, smaller one. So I've already lined it up perfectly. So that should just zip, zip right in. And again, I'm not gonna gun it completely. And the reason I'm not gunning it completely, because you don't want these bushings preloaded as, as the suspension is hanging. So it's, it's there, and our last 17 mils, one here, one here, lots of this on there, just because someday somebody's going to have to service this. These trailing arm bushings are good, so I'm just going to put this in here. It's always good to start it by hand rather than start it with the gun. Because you don't want to strip any bolts out. Now these guys I can I can drive all the way home. If I get the right size. 17 mil. I got my gun, my IR on the, on the lowest setting. Oh, sorry, on the highest setting. But the, don't worry. 17 mil bolt, not going anywhere. So now we are left with the line, our AC line, which has been you know, just gravity bleeding some of that, some of that old fluid out. So when you get this from the wrecker, you know, usually they, they pinch off that line. So the pinch part of the line has got to come off. Let's move this over here. Yeah, the pinch part of that line, right up, right up uh, down here. All right, so we're gonna remove that. Now you can just use a closed end wrench here; it doesn't matter. Just need a 10 mil. Guess we could have prepped this beforehand to save some time. Yeah, comes loose. Okay, so we're pulling that out. Garbage. Just give it a quick wipe. 
but very clean in here. I can show you that clip. Once we put it up through the hole, that clip goes right through the groove here. So we're gonna do that. Now this is keyed. Goes in one way nicely, which I hit it right there. So I'm just gonna screw that down. There's brake fluid everywhere up there. Brake fluid's corrosive. So we're gonna hit it with some brake clean. I haven't put the bra bracket on yet. I'm just gonna snug that up. It doesn't take a lot. It's a very tiny bolt, or very tiny line. So the brake clean is just to get rid of the brake fluid, which will eat the undercoat, eat the paint, and then of course it's gonna rust. So yeah, shouldn't really breathe too much of that stuff in. But we're just gonna let that dry for a while. And I'm gonna pray the brake bleeder here cracks, cracks free. I'm gonna move my, move my bucket over. So the reason I got the calipers semi off, I just wanted to make sure they, they spun back. And of course they do. Uh, so I'm gonna take the 10 mil, make sure this bleeder cracks. If it doesn't, then it's time to cry. Yeah, it cracked. And then the fluid is already dripping. Okay, so we could probably just gravity bleed this and then uh, maybe give it a couple final pumps. And that's it. So I'm gonna throw the pads back on, probably get into the shop and then get this turned on the on-car lathe. So I actually turn it on the vehicle, hook the lathe up to it, it spins it, it cuts it on the car. Um, that way, if there's any, any little wows or, or bends in your hub um, or even in the even in the rotor, it's gonna take that totally into account. So that's pretty much it. You just gotta run the cable. Uh, super easy on this side. The other side, you gotta remove the four 10 mil nuts that hold the, the heat shield in order to get to these brackets, but on the driver's side, you don't. So super simple. This is probably the most time consuming part of the whole job is to carefully sneak that in through the body and have it sit perfectly. But honestly, you saw how quick this was. I'm, I'm not even, I didn't, I don't think I really timed it, but um, definitely less than 20 minutes so far and finishing this up, it's gonna be damn quick. I wish I had a, a helmet cam that would help. Anyway, so there's your disc brake swap. So to do both sides, run cables, everything, you should be, if you're moving fairly quickly, under an hour. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned, subscribe. I'm gonna get my live stream camera hooked up and I'm gonna be doing some engine swaps live so that's coming up uh, on the c10 that's a turbo 6.0 build as well as the all motor honda build which should be running hopefully this year should be running all motor 11s for a hatch so yeah stay tuned subscribe and uh yeah comment if you like thanks for watching